three port network. Like two port network, and N port networks are described by their corresponding S matrix. For a three port network, the S matrix has nine elements. In other words, the matrix is a three by three matrix. If all the ports are matched, then SII will be equal to zero. In other words, S11, S22, and S33 are all zero because there's no reflection at all three ports. Example of three port network include the uh, diplexer and duplexer that we studied earlier. In the case of uh, diplexer or duplexer, we have a reciprocal network. What it means is that uh, S12 is equal to S21, S13 is equal to S31, and S23 is equal to S32 for a reciprocal network. But not all devices are reciprocal. One example of non-reciprocal device is the circulator, which is a three-port network. The S matrix looks like this or uh, like this. There are two types of circulator. One is a clockwise circulator and another one is anti-clockwise circulator. Notice that S12 is not equal to S21. So this is a non-reciprocal device. The operating principle of a uh, circulator is that uh, uh, if we input a signal to port 1, the wave is uh, circulated to port 2 but not to port 3. And when wave is input to port 2, the wave is then uh, circulated clockwise to port 3. Similarly, if a wave is uh, input to port 3, it is circulated to port 1. That is the case of a clockwise circulator. For the case of an anti-clockwise uh, circulator, the circulation of the signal will be in an anti-clockwise manner, meaning if signal uh, is, uh, is input to port 1, it is circulated to port 3, and if signal go into port 3, it is circulated to port 2, and similarly, if the signal is input to port 2, it is circulated to port 1. How a circulator uh, behaves uh, with uh, non-reciprocal behavior uh, is because of uh, the use of ferrite in the construction. As we know, uh, ferrite is a, a magnetic material. Um, so in the construction of a circulator, we have a T-junction or Y-junction uh, strip line. And uh, at the junction, uh, we have a, a ferrite disc above the strip and uh, another ferrite disc below the strip. A permanent magnet is then applied um, perpendicular to the ferrite disc. 
due to the presence of the static magnetic field through the flight disks, uh, we uh, get a non-reciprocal behavior. This is uh, another view of the construction. The reciprocal, uh, the sorry, the uh, circulator has uh, a number of applications. One example is the as a, a duplexer. This is uh, typically used in a radar system where a transmitter is uh, uh, connected to port one. The wave is circulated to port 2 where the antenna is connected. This wave is then transmitted. If an object reflects the wave back to the antenna, this uh, received signal is then circulated to port 3 where a receiver is connected. The signal does not go to port 1. So all the received signal will be uh, received by the receiver. At the same time, the signal from the transmitter is not circulated to port 3. Therefore, it uh, prevents the strong signal from uh, causing the receiver to become saturated. Another application of a circulator is uh, as an isolator. When we deal with uh, high power signal, uh, impedance matching is very important, but uh, very often it is very hard to achieve. We can use a circulator as an isolator that isolate the input and the uh, output. How it works is that uh, a strong signal from the generator is circulated from port 1 to port 2 to the input of the uh, amplifier. Uh, if there is any impedance mismatch, the reflected wave will be circulated to port 3 where the uh, uh, signal is terminated to ground by a match load. This will prevent the reflected wave from going back to the generator and cause uh, problem uh, to the generator. Another example of a three port network is the power divider. The power divider is sometimes also known as a coupler. The function of a power divider is to divide uh, input power P1 to two output P2 and P3. The output power P2 and P3 will be equal if alpha is 0 0.5. However, alpha can be any value. Uh, it does not have to be uh, 0 0.5. A power divider can also be used as a power combiner. In this case, we reverse the input and output. In other words, we use port 2 and port 3 as the input and port 1 as the output. Two signal, P2 and P3, are input to the combiner. At the output, we get P1, which is the sum of P2 and P3.
One simple design of a power divider is a T-junction. Consider a T-junction consisting of three transmission lines with the characteristic impedance of jack C, jack 1 and jack 2. Assuming all the ports are terminated by match load, therefore the impedance uh, seen into uh, transmission line number 1 will be equals to Z1 and the input impedance seen into the second transmission line or second output eh, will have an impedance of Z2. At the T junction or Y junction, uh, strictly speaking, there is a parasitic element due to the uh, T-junction. Uh, this parasitic uh, emittance, yeah, it, uh, let's uh, denote it as JB, where B is the susceptance of the junction. The input impedance as seen from the input uh, transmission line will be given by the uh, impedance of Z1 in parallel with Z2 and in parallel with JB. In other words, the input emittance Y is given by uh, JB plus Y1 plus Y2, where Y1 is 1 over Z1 and Y2 is 1 over Z2. For impedance matching purpose, we need uh, all this to be equals to 1 over ZC. For simplicity, uh, let us assume uh, that uh, B is negligible. So on the left hand side, we only have 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2. And on the right hand side, we have 1 over ZC. So uh, the power input to uh, the first transmission line with a characteristic impedance of Jack C will be divided uh, to uh, the output line number 1 and uh, output line number 2. Uh, the proportion of power divided to these two output lines depend on the impedance Jack 1 and Jack 2. For example, uh, uh, we uh, want to design uh, a T-junction power divider where the source impedance is 50 ohm and uh, we want to divide the power uh, with a ratio of 2 to 1. That means uh, uh, one third of the output, uh, sorry, one third of the input power go to uh, port one, and uh, two thirds of the input power go to output port number two. The input power is given by v square over two z c, where v is the voltage at the junction. The output power to port 1 is given by V square over 2 Z1 and the output power to output port number 2 is V square over 2 Z2. Since we want the output power to output port number 1 to be 
uh, one third of the input power. We write this equation equals to one third of P in and uh, the second equation to be equals to two third of P in. If we substitute P in with this equation into here, we will get uh, Z1 equals to 150 ohm and uh, Z2 equals to 75 ohm. Remember that the input impedance is given by uh, the impedance Z1 in parallel with impedance Z2. So in this example, the impedance of output port number 1 is 150 ohm and the impedance of output port number 2 is 75 ohm. Uh, we get uh, 75 ohm parallel with 150 ohm which is equal to 50 ohm. That means we have a uh, impedance match to the input impedance of 50 ohm. However, if we look into output port number 1, which has a characteristic impedance of 150 ohm. We will uh, see uh, impedance of 50 ohm in parallel with 75 ohm. That will give us only 30 ohm, which is uh, uh, a mismatch to the 150 ohm transmission line. And this mismatch will give us a reflection coefficient of minus 0 0.666. Similarly, the impedance seen into port 3 with a, a characteristic impedance of 75 ohm, uh, we will see 50 ohm in parallel with 150 ohm. That will give us 37.5 ohm which is mismatch to the 75 ohm characteristic impedance. And that means we will get a reflection coefficient of minus 0 0.333. In other words, the impedance matching that we get yeah, from this equation uh, will only give us an uh, impedance match at the input port. We do not get impedance match at the output port 1 and output port number 2. At the two output port, we will get a reflection coefficient of minus 0 0.666 and minus 0 0.333. In other words, S22 will be minus 0 0.666 and S33 will be minus 0 0.333 instead of 0. Although S11 is 0. And furthermore, in this design of the T junction, port 1 has a impedance of 50 ohm, whereas port 2 has an impedance of 150 ohm and port 3 has an impedance of 75 ohm. We do not have equal impedance at all three ports. If we want port 1, port 2 and port 3 to have the same impedance of 50 ohm, we can add a quarter wave transformer in between. So that uh, uh, 150 ohm is transformed to 50 ohm at port 2 and 75 ohm is transformed to 50 ohm at port 3.
This is how it looks like. From the 150 ohm transmission line, if we add a quarter wave transformer with a characteristic impedance of 86.6, this will transform 150 ohm to 50 ohm. And uh, for the 75 ohm transmission line, if we add a quarter wave transformer with a characteristic impedance of 61.24 ohm, uh, this will transform 75 ohm to 50 ohm. The 150 ohm line and 75 ohm line can be of any length, uh, including zero. Uh, what it means is that this two line can be omitted or the length can be reduced to zero. So we will have a 50 ohm transmission line connected directly to these two quarter wave transformer that will transform uh, 150 ohm to 50 ohm and 75 ohm to 50 ohm respectively. However, with the addition of this quarter wave transformer, uh, we still have uh, uh, impedance mismatch at port 2 and port 3. In fact, uh, the mismatch is still the same. That is, uh, S22 will still be minus 0 0.666 and uh, S33 will still be minus 0 0.333. The only thing that uh, is different is that uh, we now have a port impedance of 50 ohm instead of 150 ohm at port 2 and uh, we uh, have a, a port impedance of 50 ohm at port 3 instead of 75 ohm. This uh, impedance mismatch at port 2 and port 3 uh, can be a problem in some application. For example, if we want to use this T-junction as a power combiner where we connect a signal to port 2 and another signal to port 3, uh, these two power at port 2 and port 3 may not uh, uh, sum up at port 1 because some of the power at port 2 will be uh, coupled to port 3 and similarly some of the power at port 3 will be coupled to port 2. In other words, between port 2 and port 3, uh, there is no isolation. Our port 2 and port 3 are not isolated electrically. There are leakages from port 2 to port 3 and there are leakages from port 3 to port 2. If we need the uh, impedance match at all three ports, one way to do that is to use a resistive divider. In other words, uh, we add three resistors to the T junction. Z1, Z2, and Z3. With this resistor, we can select the correct value so that uh, all three ports are matched such that S11, S22, and S33 are all equal to zero. However, this will result in a lossy device because some of the signal power will be converted to heat by this three resistor. Nevertheless, this kind of resistive divider it may be useful in some application where uh, wide bandwidth is desirable.
an improvement to the T junction power divider is the Wilkinson power divider. Remember earlier in the T junction power divider, we make use of quarter wave transformer to obtain similar impedance at port 1, port 2 and port 3. In the design of a Wilkinson power divider, uh, we simply add a resistor between port 2 and port 3. If this resistor is chosen correctly, uh, we will have an uh, impedance match at all three ports. This is how the S matrix looks like. Notice that S11, S22 and S33 are all zero. At the same time, we will also get perfect isolation between port 2 and port 3. As shown in the S matrix, S23 and S32 are zero. So this Wilkinson power divider is uh, uh, very useful as a power divider as well as a power combiner. In this example, uh, we have equal split. That means half of the input power to port 1 is uh, uh, split to port 2 and half of the power is split to port 3. Uh, a Wilkinson power divider uh, can actually be designed to have uh, uh, unequal split if desirable. The equal split Wilkinson divider is symmetry. Uh, thus, it can be analyzed using even an odd mode analysis method. Let us consider uh, two signal V1 and V2, which are connected to port 2 and port 3 respectively. With a pair of signal, connected to two input, we can consider each signal as consisting of uh, uh, even and odd mode signal. An even mode signal means uh, the signal input to both uh, port 2 and port 3 has exactly the same magnitude and phase. As for the odd mode signal, the two signal has the same magnitude but opposite phase. We can find this uh, even mode signal and odd mode signal by using this equation. Where the uh, even mode uh, voltage is given by half of V1 plus V2 and the odd mode voltage is given by half of V1 minus V2. What it means is that uh, for uh, V1 it will be equal to the even mode signal plus the odd mode signal. If we take this even mode uh, voltage uh, plus this odd mode voltage, we will get V1. As for the second voltage V2, it is given by even mode voltage minus the odd mode voltage. So if we take this equation minus 
uh, this uh, second equation, we will get uh, V2. That's why we say that uh, for a pair of signal V1 and V2, it can be considered as the sum of an even mode signal and an odd mode signal, where the even mode signal consists of uh, a pair of signal with the same magnitude and phase, uh, whereas the odd mode signal consists of a pair of signal having the same magnitude but opposite phase. The uh, reason to split the signal into even mode and odd mode signal is so that we can analyze the response of the circuit uh, under even mode excitation and uh, also the response of the circuit under odd mode excitation and uh, finally the total output will be the sum of the two cases uh, just like in the superposition theorem that we study in circuit theory So consider the case of uh, 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 Wilkinson power divider. We can divide the circuits into two half because the the two. Uh, circuits uh, at port 2 and port 3 respectively are symmetrical. We have a signal connected to port 2 and another signal connected to port 3. Under even mode excitation, where V2 and V3 has exactly the same magnitude and phase, the voltage at this point and the voltage at this point will be the same. That means there is no potential difference between these two points and uh, therefore no current flow between port 2 and port 3. In other words, the center point is equivalent to an open circuit since no current can flow through the resistor. At port 1, we have a, a termination impedance of jack C uh, which can be considered as parallel combination of two resistors each with a value of 2 jack C. So under even mode excitation, these two points will have the same voltage, therefore no current flow between the two. Uh, so similarly, we can consider the center point as an open circuit since no current flow through uh, this wire. That means these two half circuits are completely isolated because no current flow between them. So uh, that gives us an even mode half circuit that looks like this. We have a termination resistor of 2 jack C and uh, uh, with this point open circuited and also uh, this point open circuited. Under odd mode excitation, V2 and V3 will have the same amplitude but opposite phase. 
That means when V2 is 5 volts, V3 will be negative 5 volts. When V2 is negative 5 volts, V3 will be positive 5 volts. Therefore, uh, if this point is plus V and this point is negative V, the center point will be 0 volt. In other words, we have a virtual ground at the center point. That also means that uh, we have a resistor jack C connected from this point to ground. And uh, at port 1, because the voltage at this point and the voltage at, at this point uh, are opposite polarity, for example, if this point is plus V and this point is negative V, the center point will be 0 volt. That means a virtual ground. In other words, this point is connected to ground. We have a short circuit. So the half circuit under odd mode uh, excitation will look like this, yeah, where we have a, a, a resistor Zc connected to ground. And uh, at port 1, we have a short circuit. We can analyze the even mode half circuit and the odd mode half circuit separately. And the total voltage at port 1 uh, will be uh, equal to the sum of voltage under uh, even mode excitation plus the voltage uh, that we get under odd mode excitation. This is how it looks like under even mode excitation. We have uh, open circuit between uh, port 2 and port 3. That means um, the uh, input impedance as seen at port 2 will be given by um, the impedance to jack C that is transformed by this uh, quarter wave transformer. If the quarter wave transformer has a characteristic impedance of root 2 times jack C, uh, the input impedance as seen at port 2 will be given by uh, this uh, jack naught square divided by uh, jack L, which is the 2 jack C. Remember the uh, quarter wave transformer is a impedance inverter. Uh, 2 jack C will be uh, transformed to 1 over 2 jack C multiply with the square of the characteristic impedance of the quarter wave transformer. So that gives us an uh, impedance of uh, jack C as seen at port 2. Uh, uh, impedance, uh, uh, input impedance of jack C uh, is equal to the source impedance of port 2, which is also jack C. Uh, therefore, we will have an impedance match. In other words, uh, S22 will be uh, equals to 0. Under odd mode excitation, uh, we have a virtual ground between port 2 and port 3. In other words, uh, we have a resistor jack C connected to ground at port 2, whereas we have a short circuit at port 1. 
This time, the quarter-wave transformer will transform a short circuit to an open circuit. That means at port 2, we have uh, uh, input impedance of infinity ohm due to the quarter-wave transformer in parallel with this resistor Zc. Of course, that uh, gives us a in total impedance of Zc, which is again uh, matched to the impedance of port 2, which is Zc. So we see that uh, whether it is even mode excitation or odd mode excitation, we always get an impedance match. That means we will always get uh, maximum power transfer from port 2 to port 1. Similarly, because the two half circuits are symmetrical, uh, we will also get uh, maximum power transfer from port 3 to port 1. Uh, what it means is that uh, if we connect two signal, one signal to port 2 and another signal to port 3, these two signals will add up at port 1. And uh, since we have maximum power transfer, no signal will be coupled from port 2 to port 3. Uh, that gives rise to uh, a perfect isolation. Or S23 equals to S32 uh, equals to 0. One practical implementation using microstrip line looks like this. The input port at port 1 has a characteristic impedance of Zc. Uh, the same goes for uh, port 2 and port 3, uh, which are, are all uh, having an impedance of Zc. Between port 2 and port 3, we need a resistor which is uh, equal to 2 Zc. Uh, that is the uh, impedance of port 2 plus the impedance of uh, port 3. And between port 2 and port 1, we have a quarter wave transformer. In other words, we need a transmission line with a quarter wave length. The same goes for port 3. Uh, this quarter wave transformer must have a characteristic impedance of uh, root 2 times Zc. The original design of the Wilkinson power divider has a, a limited bandwidth because the quarter wave transformer is exactly a quarter wave length only at one frequency. In order to widen the bandwidth of the Wilkinson power divider, we can add an additional uh, quarter wave transformer between port 1 and uh, T junction. Of course, uh, we will have to uh, tune the impedance of the quarter wave transformer accordingly. The resistor between port and port 3 is always equal to the uh, impedance of port 2 plus the impedance of port 3. So if the impedance of port 2 and port 3 are 50 ohm, then the resistance of this resistor, which is called isolation resistor, uh, shall be equal to 2 Zc 
or 100 ohm. This uh, additional quarter wave transformer will uh, transform 50 ohm to a uh, lower value. For example, all right, uh, the input impedance as seen at this point will be given by um, the square of 42 divided by 50. That will give us an uh, input impedance which is uh, lower than uh, uh, 50 ohm. Because the um, transform uh, of impedance is done in two steps instead of one step, this will give rise to a wider bandwidth because the impedance step for each quarter wave transformer is smaller. Alternatively, we can uh, make use of three stages of uh, Wilkinson power divider to increase the bandwidth. This is an example of uh, multi-stages power divider. The example that we see earlier is an uh, equal split Wilkinson power divider. It is possible to have unequal split Wilkinson power divider. Uh, we can design this uh, circuit using this formula. This is a, a one practical implementation of a, a one to four power division. It actually consists of a, a one to two power divider and uh, each of these output is divided again into two output uh, to give us four output. In, instead of a circular line uh, for the quarter wave transformer, in this example uh, we have uh, the quarter wave transformer in the shape of straight line which uh, may not give us uh, the best performance because of the coupling between the two lines due to uh, close uh, proximity between them. 